Uh, all right, good afternoon. Thank you so much. Uh, welcome to the Flynn. Uh, my name is Jay Wall. I'm the executive director here, and it is absolutely my honor and privilege uh, to welcome you this afternoon, and my honor and privilege to be here and part of the arts community of Vermont, where uh, many of my peers here are in the room, and it's a real joy and a pleasure to see you all. Uh, so thank you so much for being a part of this. In the last six months, about 90,000 people have come through these doors behind me, uh, which means that we try to serve a lot of Vermont through a lot of diverse programming. Or tonight, you see we have the Golden Girls, so thank you for being a friend. Uh, we're glad to have you here. Uh, we also have employed people in 11 of the 14 counties of the state, because we do programs, uh, primarily educational programs, all across the state. And we're proud to really support artists uh, all across Vermont and audiences. Uh, but those numbers are important and impressive and speak to uh, what the entire arts community provides to Vermont, I think, not just me, but all of us. Uh, but of course, you can't put a number on what we're able to do when you see the eyes of a child light up when they see a performance and they participate in the arts. So that's, of course, priceless. It's why we do this. It's, it's non-negotiable. It's the oxygen of humanity, and we will continue to do that. Uh, so I'm really, really honored to introduce our guest today to talk about why this work is so important, why it must continue, why it's uh, not just valuable, but vital, uh, necessary, and uh, will continue. Um, so thank you. Uh, at the time, Congressman Welch helped support a Save Our Stages bill, which provided uh, kind of a lifeblood to the Flynn and many others that we could reopen after the pandemic. Uh, and now I'm really thrilled to welcome him to talk about the next phase of support for theaters and nonprofit organizations that provide arts uh, everywhere. It's really all I got. Thank you for being here. It's really, really, really joyful to see you. Uh, thank you to the media for supporting this. And thank you to the Flynn staff for helping put this together. Uh, with that said, to help support the arts, he's always been a consistent friend of the Flynn, I welcome Senator Welch. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, Jay, thank you. I am so excited to be here. And the reason I am is that our nonprofit arts community that is so strong in Vermont makes such an incredible contribution that we cannot let the tough times take it down. That's really what it comes down to. You know, when I think about uh, some of the theaters that are represented here tonight. Well, of course, the Flynn and uh, Town Hall Theater. Where are you? Yep, hi, thank you. And Catamount Arts, yep, Paramount Theater, and uh, the Vermont Stage Company. Who did I leave out? Northern Stage, my own Vermont Northern Town. State. And you're, you're, but you're, but you're speaking uh, uh, pretty soon. But you know, it, it, let me just step back a minute. Um, COVID was brutal for everybody. And it was uh, personally uh, very tough on everyone. It was tough on all of our employers. It was tough on our families. It was tough on our schools. We came through it. And it was a result of uh, the federal government and the state government uh, just stepping up and trying to do everything possible to keep uh, businesses going or to hold them over until they could get going again. We ultimately got some help for the arts with Save Our Stages, uh, something uh, that I was the, the sponsor in the house on. We got the vaccine and that helped us in the most important way uh, to protect our health. But I always had the view that when we were focusing on COVID and taking the steps that we had to take to protect our health first and foremost, to get our economy going. When it was over, we not only had to save our lives and the vaccines were so important in that, we had to save our communities. And a major contributor to a sense of place, a major contributor to our sense of place and our sense of community is the nonprofit theaters, the nonprofit arts organizations. And why is that? It's number one, um, you thrive on a commitment to where you are located. In Woodstock, 
in White River Junction, in Burlington, in Rutland, in Weston, in Bennington. Second, as hard as you work, it, you couldn't survive without the contributions of citizens who live in that community and who are completely committed to the well-being of that community. You know, third, I think about the kids who are trying to find their way and don't quite know where they fit in the world and what they've sort of felt in so many cases is it's not necessarily in school or in sports, but oh my goodness, what happens when they are exposed to the arts? And you know, we're here at the Flynn and I have so many mornings when I'll be passing by and I'll see all those yellow school buses lined up on both sides of uh, Main Street and all those kids getting out of those buses and coming in to experience the wonder of the arts and getting involved in those programs. And then, of course, there's, a, you, you know, in my job, you got to talk about the economic benefits, and there are, because folks who come here to the performances go to the restaurants, they come downtown, they spend money, they stimulate the economy. But to me, what the most important thing is, is that the nonprofit arts community depends on local citizens being totally invested with their contributions and also with their participation in the effort. It depends on that sense of community where they appreciate the benefit of the arts and what that does for the soul and the heart of all of us. And they love their kids and they know that the arts are gonna give a shot to that child who just had needs that little confidence booster that, hey, what I have in me is worth expressing. So the only question I have is when <laughs> it's nonprofit, it's so hard, it depends on volunteers, it depends on contributions, why do you take on such a hard job? <laughs> I, I am so in awe of the work that each and every one of you does. So the, what I'm expressing, I think, is experienced and felt by many of my colleagues, regardless of political party and points of view on many other things, because all of us are proud of our communities. And all of us, I think, have the opportunity to be appreciative of the volunteers in our communities and the professionals in our communities who commit themselves to the wonders of what the arts can do for our communities and for our children. So we, my colleagues and I, are introducing legislation that just acknowledges that we need a little help to get the nonprofit arts communities across and through what has happened as a result of COVID. And this would be a billion dollars a year. There'd be grants that would be made available, uh, and it would be to help make certain that you get to the other side of this, because you're still struggling through no fault of your own. But habits have changed about people in audit going to uh, public events. Uh, the pressures on our downtown communities is significant. And I think this is absolutely essential for our state of Vermont and for our country that we step up the federal government and provide some help. And it's modest, given the challenges you face but that says we're behind you, we know how important the work you do is for our communities, we know how important the education that you do is for our children, and that we will be a better state and we'll be a better country if we do what needs to be done to help you continuing, continue to do the extraordinarily important work that is so good for all of us. And the final thing I want to say, uh, politics is tough now. And when I say that, it's not the politicians who are having to deal with tough stuff. All of us are. Because there's so many pressures that are pulling us apart as a community. And what I sense when I travel to Vermont, people more than anything want to have a sense of community. They don't want to have it be easy necessarily. We're used to having it be hard. But they want to have some sense that we're pulling in the same direction, that we care about one another. And having these local arts organizations, these institutions where we can come together and share our experiences, have discussions about our differences, 
our goals, our aspirations about the well-being of our children. That is so, so important and beneficial. And a little boost with our STAGE Act from the federal government is going to help you along the way financially, uh, but also to let all of us know that we're in this together. So I want to express my gratitude to everyone who is here and say why, for me, this is really, really important. There's nothing more important I'm doing than trying to help our communities come together. You're doing the hard work, and I'll do all I can with my colleagues uh, in the United States Senate uh, to give you a little backup. So thank you, one and all. And we have, we, we are so blessed to have with us Secretary Curley, come on up here. You are doing a fantastic job. We're so grateful uh, for what you've done to help Vermont recover from the floods that we've had from, uh, from COVID. You've been working day in and day out and really grateful to you for all the work you've done. Thank, thank you, you. Yeah. thank you. Well, he's so humble. We couldn't, we couldn't do it without him and, and the support from our congressional delegation, so. Truly, please know how profoundly grateful I am to be able to be here tonight and to talk about the importance of the arts in our communities and keeping them vibrant here at home. So <clears throat> thank you, Senator. I want to thank the, the Flynn Center for the Performing Arts <clears throat> uh, for hosting us today, tonight. I'm honored to be here to acknowledge and celebrate the impact of the arts on Vermont's economy. An organization out of Texas called SMU Data Arts recently released its 2023 Arts Vibrancy State Rankings. The group looks at several factors, including how many people work in the arts, how much the sector earns and spends in government supports of the arts. I'm going to touch on each of these three areas. Vermont came in 13th in the SMU Data Arts Rankings, which is particularly impressive when taking into account how rural we are. The states that ranked in the top 10 are much bigger than Vermont and home to major cities. And SMU Data Arts broke down the data even further by community size. When it comes to mid-sized cities, Burlington ranks ninth in the nation in arts vibrancy. Among small communities, Bennington ranks fourth in the country, and Bennington has made the small communities list every year since 2015. That vibrancy contributes to the entire state's economy and reflects Vermonter's commitment to the arts. They cherish and support econo the economy by spending their hard-earned money on artistic endeavors. The Arts and Economic Prospects Pre uh, Prosperity 6 report by Americans for the Arts found in 2022 there were 1.4 million attendees to the arts and culture events put on by nonprofits in Vermont. In Vermont, one million of these visits were by Vermonters. As Vermonters engage in the arts, others other benefits benefit. When looking at spending by patrons, the breakdown shows Vermonters attending cultural events spent 36 million dollars in addition to the cost of admission. They go out to eat, as the Senator said. They take an Uber. They hire a babysitter. Maybe they pop into the shops or they go for a drink after the show. <clears throat> All of these purchases contribute to our economy. The arts are a magnet for our visitors, too. Research shows that when they come to our communities to enjoy the arts, they spend even more per capita beyond the cost of, of admission than Vermonters do. Of course, Vermonters don't just enjoy the arts, they also work in the creative space. According to the U.S. Bureau of Economic Analysis in 2022, more than 10,000 Vermonters worked in the arts and culture sector, sector including nonprofits and for-profit organizations. That same study, found the creative sector contributed to $1.1 billion to the Vermont economy, which is almost 3% of our state's GDP. The state is also committed to helping the, create, the creative economy thrive. At the Agency of Commerce and Community Development, we value the Vermont art scene by investing in it. 
The state allocated $5.9 million in American Rescue Plan Act dollars in 22 arts organizations. For example, the Burlington City Arts won a grant to renovate BCA Studios, which is about a half mile from here on Pine Street. Other grant dollars went to improving the accessibility at Rutland's Paramount Theater, helping Catamount Film and Arts establish a creative campus in St. Johnsbury, funding for a town hall theater in Middlebury, which is just breaking ground, on a regional performing arts center, and supporting an expansion at the Northern Stage in White River Junction. And we'll be hearing from producing artistic director Carol Dunn in just a bit. She's over here. The state of Vermont is also a majority funder of the Vermont Arts Council. Executive Director Susan Evans McClure will be speaking with you right after me. The bottom line is the arts make Vermont better. They improve our quality of life and make our economy stronger. I hope you'll join me in supporting the arts and the artists that are our neighbors. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Susan Evans McClure of the Vermont Arts Council. Good evening, everyone. I'm Susan Evans McClure, Executive Director of the Vermont Arts Council. The Vermont Arts Council is Vermont's state arts agency, and we are working to build a more creative state for all Vermonters. But we can't do that alone. We rely on the support, incredible support from our federal delegation and our state partners. And thank you so much, Secretary Curley, for that wonderful overview and lots of data. I'm thrilled that we're here this evening talking about the importance of our nonprofit theaters in Vermont and the vital nature of federal funding to support this industry. As Secretary Curley mentioned, there are millions and millions and millions of dollars <laughs> created by Vermont's nonprofit arts and culture sector. Um, and while I tend to think that Vermont does punch above our weight class, we are a small state, and even a small state is creating this much economic impact from the arts. So if you look at what that adds up to across the entire United States, it's truly staggering. And when COVID kicked the legs out from under the stool of the performing arts sector, we came together as a nation to support this industry. But while the pandemic may be behind us, its effects are ongoing and lingering, and nonprofit theaters are struggling. So it's time for us to come together again. Right here in Vermont, nonprofit theaters who create the most incredible humanizing artwork are at the risk of closing, and some of them are closing even as we speak. And when we lose these institutions, we lose more than the dollars in our economy. You know, since the beginning of human existence, really, not to get too big about it, but we've always used performance as a way to express our emotions, to learn, and to connect. Aristotle himself actually said that theater works as an educational tool because it allows us to use these collective moments of catharsis, this ability to experience our very human emotions of pity and fear together, in space together. And when our nonprofit theaters are at risk, we risk losing the very things that our country needs so much right now. We need the ability to connect with each other, to experience new ways of thinking, and to feel empowered to create the world that we want to see. When we do what's right for the arts, we're doing what's right for humanity, and we're doing what's right for our economy. There's few federal investments that we're making that can offer those kind of returns. So Vermont and the Vermont Arts Council are so grateful to Senator Welch's leadership in valuing and supporting nonprofit theater and performing arts organizations. There have been pivotal moments in our history where the American government has made meaningful investments in the creative sector. The New Deal, the founding of the National Endowment for the Arts. Senator Welch and his co-sponsors understand that this is another pivotal moment for our federal leadership to take bold action and invest in the future of American theater. We will all be better off for it. And now I'm pleased to introduce one of the people who are doing just that in this state, uh, Carol Dunn from Northern Stage and White River Junction. Thank you. So I want to tell you all, I'm, I'm Carol Dunn. I'm Carol. I'm the producing artistic director of Northern Stage, which means I know where the money is coming and going, and I put on the shows. And so it's a wonderful opportunity um, to run an extraordinary institution. I always say to our audiences, Vermont is the most incredible place to do theater. I've done theater my whole life, and there is a hunger here that you all are speaking to, that Vermonters want the arts, 
want to be together, want to communicate, want to think, want to open doors for their children to experience things that they never thought that they could before. It is so true that the regional theater, it's an emergency situation. Thank you all for this platform to speak about what we're doing and what we're facing. The regional theater absolutely is different than uh, the uh, theater that you see in major cities that's commercial. We are about community. And the best way I can tell that story is often people say to me, well, how do you pick what plays you're going to do for your audiences? It's not for the actors. I don't think, oh, I've got a role for this person. It's not for the playwrights. Oh, I have this playwright that I really definitely want to do. I have all of those. It's for our audiences. We literally try to read the minds and hearts of our community to say, this is a story we need to tell right now. Maybe we don't have the resources to do it, but we'll find them and we'll put that together. And by that, we live by our mission, which is to change lives one story at a time. That will be through the playwright, that will be through the student, that will be for audience members, and it might just be somebody who pops in and says, where's the nearest coffee shop, and we're kind to them. We want to be a part of the community. The story of Northern Stage is pretty amazing, and I will just tell you, we were uh, created in 1998. Brooke Chardelli created the company with $5,000, and maybe 100 people came to see seven plays. It was rough. But the community felt in 1998, a group of people, that this could be a theater in White River Junction, which was an economic downturn. White River Junction was a great train town. The, the musical White Christmas takes place on the train to White River Junction. Well, this was a tough time. And there was a belief in 1998 that the arts might rejuvenate White River Junction. And from 1998 until, I will say, 2019, well, let's say March 2020, <laughs> there was an upward movement from that $5,000 budget to a $4 million budget. And in 2019, we had over 50,000 people coming to shows at Northern Stage, uh, our educational shows, our main stage shows, and we even had tours in New York of pieces that we had created. So yes, COVID hit and took everything away for a moment, but not the opportunity that we all have as Vermonters to keep going, to be scrappy, to work together, and make sure that we're there for each other. I will say that, um, yes, we experienced 40% fewer audiences. Yes, our donations are down. We built an outdoor theater because we're scrappy, and then it rained every day last summer. <laughs> so things have been extraordinarily difficult. But I have an incredible, hopeful message here which is shored up by the fact that I'm here with you and literally hearing the senator tell our story just as passionately as I can, which is remarkable, so thank you. We've asked ourselves over the past couple of years in the theater, is this an existential crisis facing us? Are we going to go out of existence or is this where we need a longer runway for our emergence? And there are times when my fellow theater leaders said, we're going out of business, it's not going to happen. But that's not true. Because of people like you, because of the work of the Stage Act, because of the belief in the power of theater to change lives, this is a runway issue. And what we are doing here today is giving us the support to keep going, to actually get better at what we do, to serve our audiences better. And I have to say that being in the lobby of our company this year, there is a new hunger People want live performance more, and I can see it in their eyes, and I can feel it because they will not leave the theater when we all want to go home and lock the doors because our audiences, our community are talking together about what they've seen, what they feel. We might not all agree, but we love communicating together. So thank you so much for the Stage Act, all of you for all that you do for the arts, and I know that together we're gonna to ensure that the arts are alive and well for decades to come. Thank you. If anybody has any questions, we're glad to take them. Why don't you all come on up in case, uh, yeah, see if, there's, uh, if anybody has any questions. But thank you all, by the way. Um, Come on over here. <laughs> he, wants, he wants company. Oh, yeah. come on this side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Senator, what's Mary on the title of seven days? Do you have any sense of what kind of support there is in the Senate for this bill? 
Uh, there's a good deal of support. Um, but the big challenge for us will be to get an appropriation. Uh, and it's uphill all the time with an appropriation. But what I have experience with was the Save Our Stages Act. And that was a kind of at the end. It was seen as uh, not existential, like the vaccines were, or like unemployment benefits were, or like the check. But when that got momentum, uh, Amy Klobuchar was my colleague. She was then in the Senate. I was in the House. But it was amazing to me how my Republican colleagues, when they started hearing from their Flynn theaters, their Paramount theaters, their northern stages in their communities, uh, it really created what seemed like an impossible lift. Uh, we did it. So my hope is that'll happen here um, and that as this as we start to have this go out, uh, we'll be able to get it. We'll be able to get it done. I mean, the, the folks here spoke very eloquently about the role this plays in the community, and we are on we're on the edge here. You know, we're still coming out of COVID emotionally, uh, in, in in many ways, uh, health-wise in many ways, catching up in education in many ways. But some of our community institutions uh, are the last to come back. You know. What happened with our theaters, they were the first to have to close because you couldn't be together. Remember? This is like a distant memory now. Gathering. But they were gathering, so they, they couldn't have performances. And then they were the last in many ways to come back because people had to be confident that it was okay to come back. But that's still a little bit of a drag uh, for them. Uh, so uh, my experience in Congress is that the Whatever you start out doing is always impossible until you get it done, and then Amen. it's an, and, and then it's inevitable. Okay. All right. We really appreciate, um, so appreciate all the nonprofit theaters coming here from great distances. But I want to just finish by uh, saying what I said in the beginning: the folks who do the hard work, they're to my left and right. And I'm just inspired by the commitment that uh, you've shown to your communities and to the kids and the Vermonters and, not, and Verm people from all over who come here. And we've got a great arts tradition, including some folks from around here who've won big awards for the plays they've written that are being on Broadway. I mean, it's astonishing uh, what's happened here. So thank you all very much uh, for your participation. Thank you.